Electrical engineering is extremely desirable as the second most popular engineering major with great salary prospects, an immense impact, and a ton of versatile career paths. But this actually creates quite the problem. Most of the estimated 6 million electrical engineering students around the world don't even know what careers are available to them when they graduate. This video is the answer to that problem. 9 real life job titles that you can find on LinkedIn, tailor your degree to, and ultimately achieve a prosperous career in. Now let's get right into it. I'm Engineer Joe, welcome to Engineering Insiders. Now, this video is not meant to be your introduction to electrical engineering. If you've never heard of the field or don't really know the basics, check out our So You Want To Be video on the topic and then come right back to this one to see what you can really do with the degree. Alright, now let's dig right in. Starting off our EE jobs with a truly underrated career, we have a field that takes the basic circuit knowledge that you learn in electromagnetic physics and flips it on its head. These engineers are radio frequency and microwave engineers that use the normal circuit components in design practices, but all in really high frequency applications. Weird things happen at these frequency ranges. Inductors act like capacitors, capacitors act like inductors, and you have to start using something called a Smith chart to map out how your complex resistances change as you tweak components. Now, these engineers specialize in how the circuit differs in these high frequency applications to create electromagnetic systems that connect literally every wireless device you could ever think of. From Bluetooth and home Wi-Fi to the James Webb satellite sending signals literally a million miles away and MRI machines helping doctors with their diagnostics. RF engineers are behind all of it working on tiny circuits to ultimately move electromagnetic waves through air, space, and sometimes even the human body. Now, these engineers work in all types of industries. You'll understand just how many when you learn the secret to RF engineering. Let me show you. You start with an antenna and receive a signal from it. Easy enough. Following that, there is some RF circuitry to filter out the unwanted signals gathered by the antenna and amplify the intended signal to then down convert it from the high frequency to something we can sample and digitize. From there, the software team decodes the digitized information and encodes a response signal. The response signal gets up converted to RF frequency again and goes through the amplification and filtering and out the antenna once more. Now that you have the basics down on almost every modern RF system, called an SDR, you know how satellites, rockets, cars, phones, IoT, Wi-Fi, ultrasounds, MRIs, and a ton more work. From there, you can extrapolate that these engineers work in any and every industry that does antenna and traveling wave stuff. Smartphones, consumer devices, automotive, robotics, aerospace, defense, R&D semiconductor and IC design, telecommunications, you name it. Now, if you want to know how much these engineers make, make sure to watch to the end where we compare the salaries of each of the fields in today's video. But that's enough with high frequency applications. Let's move on to the next field, one that picks up where RF engineers left off. Firmware and digital design engineering. Remember when I said that RF signals get shifted down to lower frequencies so that they can be digitized? Well, that happens with an analog to digital converter component and then goes right into the firmware engineer's domain, the microcontroller or FPGA. These components are the brains of any engineering operation. Basically just logic gates, when they're fed a string of inputs, they will supply an output. For a simple example, a claw machine FPGA is in a waiting state until the coin actuator tells it enough money has been inserted. Then it goes down into the play state and sends signals to the claw that mirror the joystick's movement. When the grab button is finally pressed, it simply extends the arm downward and grabs, dropping any successful plush toy into the drop box and then goes right back into the waiting state. Sounds like all fun and games right? Well, not exactly. These engineers work with less hardware than your RF engineer, for example, meaning they might pick an exact FPGA or microcontroller chip for their application and then have a little breakout board and some lab equipment to test with, but the bulk of their work will be done in C, C++, and or Verilog software programming where our hardware RF engineers would go through struggles of fitting their entire design into a small board or small package, firmware engineers have a different issue. They have trouble allocating enough computational ability quickly enough to all the computational hungry systems. Let's take a drone for example. The onboard FPGA is literally always taking input signals from the controller and then sending out even more signals so that the actuators can understand and move the drone. 
all the while taking input from all of its sensors and allocating that data into memory slots. Also, drones are so small that this is typically done with an edge FPGA, meaning one with less logic elements and memory blocks. These engineers typically work in aerospace, defense, telecommunications for software-defined radios, and are very important in the automotive industry and design and work with most all consumer electronics, medical devices, and other industries. But now let's transition back to hardware into the kilovolts, power converters, and engines of energy and power engineers. These engineers are behind the electrical energy getting used by all of the various amplifiers, diodes, and computing components in your device right now to display this video. Whether you're looking at a TV, laptop, phone, tablet, desktop, whatever, a power engineer has meticulously designed how to convert AC power from a wall outlet or stored energy from the battery into each subsystem of the device in the most efficient manner possible. And this doesn't just stop at consumer devices either. Power engineers solve similar electrical energy and power generation and distribution issues on naval ships, old school cars and brand new EVs, spaceships, satellites, pretty much every single unit that uses electrical power. On a grander scale, some engineers specialize in mass generation and distribution of power, like turning running water into electrical energy at the Amazon's hydroelectric power plant and distributing the kilovolts of generated energy some 1500 miles to substations, which transfer the energy into a form that can be consumed by households, hospitals, schools, you get the idea. Now, these engineers find careers in industries like renewable energy, government power generation distribution, of course, consumer electronics, aerospace defense, automotive, construction efforts for smart homes and HVAC systems, and more. But now we wanna transition back closer to the programming side of things and one of our channel's favorite fields, embedded systems and computer engineering. Now, if you remember from earlier, we had the firmware engineers that program chips to do things like navigating drones and orienting satellites. But the firmware and digital design engineers are only able to do that because of embedded software engineers. They code very low on the software stack, meaning that they write software that literally turns firmware into low-level commands that interact with the hardware. For example, if you were a computer engineer for a PS5, you could be one, designing the hardware that goes into the PS5, like specifically designing the GPU, motherboard, and other peripherals, or two, writing the code so that all of these things can be accessed from the central processing unit. For example, turning on a wireless controller will send RF waves through the air into the antenna in the PS5, which sends a signal to the processing unit in the PS5 to turn on each piece of hardware, log into your account through Wi-Fi, and get the system ready to go. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed, but we're starting to see how each of the electrical subfields come together on each product. Pretty cool if you ask me. But if you want to learn more about real life engineering and the path through your degree, make sure to like and subscribe as it's free and really helps us out. Now back to embedded and computer engineers, they find themselves in industries like consumer electronics, automotive industries, aerospace and defense, medical devices, telecommunications, robotics, and basically anything and everything that needs to compute. And a quick note that these jobs are mostly for the companies that don't outsource hardware. For example, companies like Lenovo, Dell, and HP make computers by outsourcing most of the parts. And since they aren't designing them, there are less roles for embedded computer engineers in the design stage, but more in the system level, piecing everything together type of stage. Whereas companies like Apple, Tesla, and Google mostly make all of their own major parts so that there will be more embedded in computer engineer efforts at companies like that. Now, next we have a topic foreign to engineering insiders so far. In other words, we're breaking new land into Integrated Circuit Design Engineers. These engineers are kind of like embedded engineers, but for circuitry, where engineers like me simply get to benefit from the embedded software that runs my computers and onboard FPGAs. We also benefit from the embedded hardware that goes into every chip or integrated circuit that I simply get to plug into a design and trust that it works. For example, I needed a simple differential to single-ended op-amp circuit for a voltage detect line. So I asked around and found that we commonly use a certain chip. This chip was designed by an integrated circuit engineer who specializes in the tiny electromagnetic circuit components and packaging 
a basically small embedded circuit. It's like packaging high power amplifiers, high frequency amplifiers, high power and frequency amplifiers, digital logic chips, memory chips like RAM, and even dense microcontrollers and processors like those found in Tesla and new Apple products. These engineers work heavily in the semiconductor industry and kind of even are their own industry because they make chips that literally every other engineer on this list will use meaning their designs can end up in really any industry that has electronics, which is pretty big. But enough with the cute little package circuits, let's move on to another field, automation and test engineering. Sometimes called instrumentation engineers, they are our automation experts. Let's start with an example. Satellite companies need to test their payloads before launch making sure the RF hardware receives, interprets, and transmits back out the antenna, the correct up and down links to and from the ground station. So, automation engineers will write scripts in Python if they're lucky and LabVIEW if they are not, to run the satellite systems through every possible frequency, power, mode, temperature, sealed vacuum, and vibration testing configuration. Electrical test engineers have a very in-depth understanding of how electrical lab equipment works and make automation libraries to basically turn manual tests into automatic ones that sweep through every test state, saving minutes, hours, or even days and weeks at a time. These engineers mainly exist on production lines, ensuring manufactured products meet every requirement before they're shipped out. For example, Apple automation engineers might write scripts that test the displays, cameras, sensors, and buttons all work correctly, ensure that the battery charges on time and drains, and all wireless communications work as intended. You can also find test engineers on the design side of things writing automation scripts to test the validity of different designs, proving proof of concepts to be a failure or successful. Their industry exists anywhere you can find engineering products being widely tested and or produced. Defense, telecommunications, automotive, IoT, consumer electronics, medical devices, manufacturing plants, and many more. But up next we have another channel favorite, Robotics and Mechatronics Engineers, also looped in with another just as exciting field, Biomedical Engineering. These fields aren't all the same at all, but are about the same distance from Electrical Engineering. As in they are a mix of Electrical with a few other fields. Now, in case you don't know, Mechatronics is basically a Mechanical Engineering degree with Automatic Miners and Electrical and Software slash Computer Engineering yielding work like designing automatic robot arms and manufacturing lines, being useful with lab equipment, and skilled enough with the three main fields to make entire designs themselves. From skee-ball arcade games to roller coasters and even the Las Vegas sphere, mechatronics engineers could be behind all of them. But robotics is more of a well-defined role where they will make, you guessed it, robots. From simple household devices to Teslas and even more complex machines like the Europa Clipper looking for life on Jupiter's moon Europa, robotics engineers are there to interpret the world around the robot, translate it for the robot to understand, employ a thinking process, and have it act upon what it sees. Now biomedical engineering is just as mesmerizing, but instead of bettering robot technology, they better our human technology. They do things like creating artificial organs and tissues, with upcoming fields of tissue engineering, developing biomaterials compatible with biological systems, and the bioinstrumentation in neural engineering to enhance today's cancer diagnostics and tomorrow's ways of life. Biomedical engineers truly have become some of the real life superheroes of today's world. Now you can find robotics and mechatronics engineers in pretty much any of the common industries we've brought up today, and biomedical engineers are almost solely in the medical instrumentation field in one way or another. Now it's time to shift gears to one of the cool sides of electrical engineering, but there's kind of a twist here. We have layout, CAD, and simulation engineers, who basically work all day in and out with a single engineering specific software. When I was going through my own electrical engineering degree, one of the most anticipated tasks and careers was being a layout engineer, turning a circuit schematic into a living, breathing, charged PCB. Now, not to burst your bubble if you're in this spot, but once you do it a few times, you realize that although it has its rabbit holes of designs, of tips and tricks, there is much more to be desired. Don't get me wrong, many engineers specialize in say RF board layout as a contractor and have nice job stability working from home for the rest of their lives. 
but it isn't really the plan, design, redesign, push product cycle that most engineers itch for. CAD and simulation engineers are in a similar boat. They know a ton of useful information, but are really specializing in one exact software and committing to learning just that, nothing else really. That being said, these engineers are typically contracted by all your major engineering companies, so their industries are as boundless as electrical engineering itself. And finally, we have the career to rule them all. One you might not have expected, electrical engineering. Yes, many job posts you'll see are for an electrical engineer rather than one of the more well-defined subfields that we've discussed thus far. When a job title says electrical engineer, it usually means you're going to be doing a little bit of everything, picking components for mixed signal circuits, firmware programming, PCB layout, and power budgeting, and wrapping it all into one project like an AUV, IoT device, or maybe a camera. And now that you know all of the fields, here is the current average US salaries for all of these roles. Are you surprised by any of them? Now I want to hear from you. Now that you've heard the beginnings to each of these fields, which one would you pick? Make sure to check out our other videos for deeper dives on all of these fields. And if you want to see why the mechatronics field is growing faster than all the rest, check out this video. Thanks for watching and happy engineering everybody.